Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation. We have x to the fifth power plus the quantity two minus x to the fifth power equals 82. And we're going to be solving for x values. Now, this might look like a quintic equation, but it's actually not quintic. Because when you expand the second expression, you're going to get a negative x to the fifth power and that's gonna cancel out. So we're gonna end up with a quartic equation. If you just work it out, you're going to end up with something like this. Isn't that nice? Yes, you can definitely solve this. And obviously you can divide both sides by five, maybe even 10. So that's going to be uh, simplify this a great deal. And then you can kind of go about solving this quartic equation. But that's going to be a lot of work. But you could call this the first method, maybe first method, solve the quartic, you know, so on and so forth. And you'll hopefully get the answers right? You can definitely use the rational root theorem if there are any rational roots, but there may not be. And we'll see that with the second method. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method for this equation. So I didn't tell you that I was going to present at least two methods, right? But if you consider the first one, maybe it'll end up being three. So we have the following x to the fifth and two minus x to the fifth. And their sum is 82. Obviously, at this point, people are going to start guessing See if you can guess and check the answer because it's not an integer, is it? Anyways, so to be able to solve this problem, we can actually go ahead and do this, turn this into a system of equations. I mean, we could ask this question as a system problem too, but I think this is more interesting. So I'm going to set two minus X equal to Y and don't ask why. Okay. So two minus X equals Y. And that just means x plus y equals 2, right? So that gives us one equation. And obviously, by replacing 2 minus x with y, we're getting another equation, x to the fifth plus y to the fifth equals 82. And this is going to be our system. So from a single variable, we go to a system y, make things harder. Actually, this kind of makes it easier. Now, Notice that X and Y are interchangeable. So whatever works for X is also going to work for Y. We'll consider that when we solve the problem. But since we're looking for X, it doesn't really matter. So take a look at this. This kind of looks like a quintic system, right? But again, it ends up being a quartic. It's nice because we don't have a quintic formula, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with X minus, uh, I mean, X plus Y equals two and just look at its powers. So what happens if I just square it? That'll be four, right? And if you expand it, you're gonna get x squared plus y squared plus two xy equals four. Now from here, I can basically write x squared plus y squared as four minus two xy. So this allows me to write the sum of squares in terms of xy, the product, and that'll be helpful, okay? And then let's go ahead and cube it, same idea. And when you cube to it, you're going to get eight because X plus Y is equal to two. And using the binomial theorem or any other thing, remember when we use the cubic formula, we use an identity, which looks like this X cubed plus Y cubed plus three X Y times X plus Y. And that is equivalent to X plus Y to the third power and it's equal to eight. Now this is kind of helpful because this allows you to isolate this in terms of X Y again, because we do know that x plus y is equal to 2, right? So this gives us the following, x cubed plus y cubed plus 6xy equals 8. And pay attention to this because something like this might come up in another video, maybe tomorrow, right? So take note. And from here, I can kind of write the sum of two cubes as 8 minus 6xy. So that's just another thing that I'm going to need I got the sum of squares and I got the sum of cubes, right? So from these two equations, guess what I'm going to build? The sum of the fifth powers. Exactly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply this sum by this sum. And hopefully we're going to get something helpful. First, x cubed times x squared is x to the fifth. And then I get x cubed y squared. And then I get y cubed x squared. And then I get y to the fifth. Obviously, these two should go together. Let's go ahead and put them together. And guess what? We have something on the left hand side, but we'll take care of that later. So x to the fifth plus y to the fifth and these two terms. 
actually have a common factor, which is x squared y squared. And if I take that out, I'll end up with x plus y. And remember, x plus y is equal to 2. Remember that? Okay. But we also have some expressions for the left-hand side because the sum of cubes can be written as 8 minus 6xy. And the sum of squares can be written as 4 minus 2xy. And guess what this gives us? An equation in xy. But our goal is to isolate this, right? Because I also know what that is equal to, don't we? x to the fifth plus y to the fifth was equal to, what was it? Oh, it was equal to 82 based on my assumption. So here we go. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and set this equal to 82. And that leaves us with something super duper helpful. Here's the thing. We're going to go ahead and distribute this 32 minus 16xy minus 24xy plus 12x squared y squared equals 82 plus 2x squared y squared. Now is a good time, I think, to replace xy with something. How about calling it p for product? Okay. So now we get the following. This is p squared and this is p squared. So we're going to get 12 minus 2, 10 p squared. And these two are going to give me negative 40 p. And then plus 32 minus 82, that's going to give me a minus 50. And the whole thing is equal to zero. So I, I was able to get everything on the left hand side. And now we're going to solve for p, which is the product. Great. Let's divide everything by 10, right? That's a good improvement. And now we end up with a factorable trinomial. p minus 5, p plus 1, right? Remember the process? Looking for two numbers that pro whose product is negative 5. And then this equal to 0 implies p equals 5 and p equals negative 1. But p is xy, the product. Remember that? So xy is equal to 5, but guess what? I also know that at the same time, x plus y is equal to 2 in both cases because that's already given. So this gives us another nice system or actually two systems. And by solving those systems, we're going to get the answers. Make sense? Cool. Let's go. So how do you solve this system pretty quickly? You could probably do the following. You can replace y with 2 minus x and replace the y with that. x times 2 minus x is equal to 5. And since I'm looking for x, I don't really care about y. From here, I get 2x minus x squared is equal to 5. x squared minus 2x plus 5 is equal to 0. Uh oh, we don't get real solutions. Too bad. But let's solve it. And we can actually solve this by using the following uh, strategy. x is going to be 1 plus minus some number a, which is kind of like called the Poisson law method, even though he didn't invent it. It was known for many years, including myself. But anyways, uh, he made a video about it, and I also made a video about it. So... <laughs> You can kind of uh, look at the sum of the roots. It's 2 by Vieta's formulas. And the product is supposed to be 5 from C minus uh, C over A. And that's equal to 5. 1 minus A squared is equal to 5. A squared is equal to negative 4. A is equal to plus minus 2i. Okay. I hope that helps. I hope that wasn't way too fast. But even if you use the quadratic formula, you would get the exact same solutions. 1 plus minus 2i. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a look at the other equation x plus y is equal to 2. Again, y is equal to 2 minus x. Plug it in here. You get x times 2 minus x equals negative 1. And this should give us a nice equation. 2x minus x squared is equal to negative 1. Put everything on the right hand side. And this should give us, nope, not integer solutions, but it should give us x equals negative b plus minus square square b squared, which is 4. And that's, I think, is going to be 2 root 2 divide by 2, and that's going to end up 1 plus minus root 2. So those are going to be the solutions. Let's go ahead and check them out with Wolfram Alpha, okay? And we're going to look at a graph too, I think, if I made it. Here we go. Yes, that's the cortic, two intersection points, which means there are two real solutions and two non-real solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.